I so love Ligonier Ministries' YouTube channel because they are always keeping R.C. Sproul's name alive by continually uploading his sermons. That man was an amazing teacher, and I've learned so much from what I like to refer to as his chalkboard hermeneutics. My Bible is full of notes, talking points, and definitions that I've learned from his teachings. I wanted to share an excerpt from one of his sermons in which he talks about his unbelieving uncle who was dying. I'm going to go ahead and play that clip. Now, the point in making this video is to remind you that there are no true atheists. They all know. They all know. Romans 1.20, for since the creation of this world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, without excuse. That's an absolutely terrifying thing that on Judgment Day, everyone will be without excuse. What the scripture means about somebody dying in their sins is that it describes that person who up until the very last moment of their lives, until they pass over the line, they refuse. They absolutely refuse to submit to their creator. I had an uncle. <laughs> I mean, I had an uncle who was one of the roughest, toughest guys in all the world. He was a laborer. He had, we used to call him meat muscles. He had muscles and he looked like a, a page out of Streetcar Named Desire when he would come into our house with the, with the old fashioned, uh, sweatshirt and the muscles bulging his fingernails all black and grimy and when I decided to go into ministry my uh, my uncle just about had apoplexy I might as well I might have told him I had a sex change operation he, he said that uh, you know for him anybody that went in the ministry had to be a, a, a bona fide sissy and had just uh, completely uh, abandoned all hopes of, of manhood and he said oh you're gonna wear your collar around backwards and wear a little little dress and all and he just he rode me unmerciful he contracted a, a fatal disease and in the last days of his life I mean the last weeks of his life when I would go to see him uh, he would still laugh and mock the things of God and my profession, but I knew he loved me. I mean, that was that always came through all of the uh, the fooling around and and so on. And then I remember the day we, I was in his bedroom, and things were rough for him, and and I said to him, "Are you ready to meet God?" And he looked at me, and all the joking stopped, and he said, No. And the tears came, and he said, But I want to be. Tell me about it. <laughs> and I had one of those rare and unspeakably precious experiences with a dying man. And he got things settled. And I, I know that my uncle died in faith. I told that to Billy Graham, and I said, what about Jack Parr? And he said, R.C., I don't know where Jack Parr is right now with his faith, but we're still in touch, and we stay in touch. And he said, it's my prayer that when Jack Parr's time comes, that he will die in faith.